everyone, my name's Jesse, and it's great to be with you as we wrap up our kickoff series, This Is Us. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about our collective roles in making this year amazing. We talked about the fact that we see you, that you are not alone, and we are committed to seeing you and knowing you. We talked about the fact that you are loved, and that you uh, are loved, and that we are committed to loving you no matter what. And to close us off, we're going to talk about how we need you. Now, I'm excited to close this off because of the role I have here at Village. I get to see all over, I get to oversee all of family ministries as the director of family ministries. That includes Village Kids, Village Youth, and even Young Adults. So from where I get to sit, I have a unique spot to see the whole picture right across Canada. Have you ever built a large puzzle but didn't have the actual picture on the box to guide you? It can actually be really tough. There are hundreds of individual puzzle pieces, and sometimes it's clear on how they forget together, fit together, but sometimes not so much. So we struggle to put the pieces together, and slowly but surely, each piece reveals more and more about the image. Eventually, you have this amazing picture when all the pieces come together, and you're so excited. But what if a piece is missing? My daughter, Eliana, loves puzzles. She absolutely loves them. But she also loves losing pieces in the middle of making those puzzles. She actually gets rather frustrated when the piece is lost because for her, the missing piece is needed to complete the puzzle. For Ellie, every single piece matters and the, pieces, the puzzle is not complete without every single piece. This year is all about who we are as a collective village youth group. This group is like a really big puzzle from where I get to sit in my role, every piece of the puzzle matters because we need each and every piece in order to make the whole picture. More on that in a little bit. But first, I've got a question for you. I want you to turn to a few people around you and discuss the following. If you are watching this online or on your own, take some time to reflect your thoughts and then to share them with somebody you trust. All right, so here's the question. Why is it important to have all the pieces when you're building something? Again, here it is. Why is it important to have all the pieces when you're building something? All right, now go. Hey everyone, welcome back. Now, I want to shift gears from puzzles and missing pieces to the human body and our role at Village Youth and Beyond. I find the human body very fascinating, and there are countless ways that the, the way the body works that kind of boggles my mind, but the craziest for me is the human eye. Did you know that you see the world upside down and that your brains in real time flip that image right side up so you don't even know it's happening? It's happening so instantaneous. Or, as I was talking with a friend here at work, that when I see the color red and she sees the color red, we actually see different shades of the color red based on the way our eye is. What's more crazy is that that slight shift in your lens or the shape of your eye can change what you see or even how well you see. Our bodies are designed to work together in unison. Every body part has a vital role to make the whole work. In his letter to the Corinthian church, Paul writes about this topic. Now, if you have a Bible like mine, or an app, or you can get online, open up to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 26, and then follow along with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 26. Here's what it says. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For we are one spirit, we are baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, all are made to drink one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If a foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But it is as God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, 
yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think are less honorable, we bestow the greatest honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with great modesty, which is more, uh, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so comprised the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. There may, <laughs> that there may be no division of the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. All right, now let's start connecting some dots here. God created our bodies to be in unison, to work together. That means that everything was created to kind of come together and work in a very particular way. In the same way, the church was created to work together. Every person within the local and global church has a role. Paul kind of emphasizes this in verses 15 to 17. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that wouldn't make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Could you imagine if the body was just a giant eyeball or that your body had no ears? You would be missing out on something vital. Okay, now here's where the rub kind of comes in, where analogies start to fall apart. So let's drop the puzzles, let's drop the body parts, and let me be really clear. We need you. We need you because you are part of this church, and this youth group is your home, and you have a role to play. Without you, we are actually missing a puzzle piece, or we're acting like we're a whole ear. We need you. And the hard part is that your generation, and even my generation, struggle to understand that and believe that we have a role, that we have a place, that we are actually needed. Some of you today are sitting there thinking, <laughs> Jesse, if you only knew me, you actually wouldn't want me. And there's no way you would definitely need me. But the problem is that's a lie. That's an utter lie, and let me tell you why. Paul is super clear that everyone has a role to play. He goes on in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 to 31 to say this. Now you are the body of Christ and the individual members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administration, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles... Are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. What Paul is talking about here is spiritual gifts. These are gifts given to people, but it's not just one gift, there are actually many gifts for all people. When you think about spiritual gifts, I want you to think about the idea of your gifts, talents, and abilities that God has given you to impact the world for Jesus. These gifts, talents, and abilities are given to every single person, and they are what you bring each and every week when you come to Village Youth and beyond. You are needed because you have something to offer, even if you don't believe it. Now, I used to talk about, to a lot of students about this kind of idea, and I've often used three unique words to kind of help us understand what these are. And those words are unique, designed, and called. First, let's talk about unique. You are unique. There isn't actually anyone else like you in all the creation. There's only one of you, and there's only ever going to be one of you. Your experience, gifts, talents, abilities, perks and quirks, weirdnesses, all those things that make up who you are, are unique to you because there's only one of you in all of creation. Designed. You are here by design, not by chance. It's not an accident. It's intentional. 
I want you to hear me when I say this again, because I know that some of you will struggle with this. You are here by design. You are not an accident. It is intentional. By that, I mean that you are part of junior youth or senior youth by design. You live where you are in the house that you have with the family you have by design. Where you go to school, even where your locker is or where you catch the bus in the morning is by design. It's there intentionally because you are called. You are called to go in the world and to tell others about Jesus. You can do this because you are where you are by design, not by chance. Because there's only one of you. Because you are unique. And we need you. We need you to reach into your world and go where, where we can't go as your leaders. We need you to invest into your small groups and to be open and honest because we actually can't do this without you. We need you to ask questions, be vulnerable, and commit to being here each and every week because without you, we are missing something. Did you hear me? That without you being here, we are less. We are missing something. This is us. We want to show the world that they are not alone. We want to love others with that same love of Jesus. We want to create spaces where our gifts, talents, and abilities can impact the world. This is us, and it includes you. At Village Youth, we need you to know and understand that you are needed. We need you to be part of this family, to play a role in our body each and every week, because without you, we are missing something. I want you to hear me just for a second. If you were in junior youth, grade six boy, grade seven girl, we need you because without you, we're missing something. If you're in senior youth, you're in grade 10 or you're graduating this year, we need you because without you, we're missing something. If you are that leader and you're not entirely sure what you signed up for, we need you because without you, we're missing something. Our vision at Village Youth is to disciple students through an authentic community, teaching them how to live a life that's true to the gospel and to share that gospel with others. We can't do any of that without you, and we wouldn't even want to try. This is us. This is who we are, and we can't wait to see what God is going to do in and through everyone this next year at Village Youth. I'm so excited for what's coming. Thank you so much for watching and knowing and know that I'm praying for you as you all start this year. If you're watching this online, you can work your way through these questions on your own and talk about them with somebody you trust. Or if you're meeting with your small group, I hope you have a great discussion and we'll see you next time. See ya.